Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, it's five o'clock. I wanna welcome everybody to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter and chair of the Amherst Design Review Board. I call this meeting to order. Uh, we will begin with a roll call of the members of the Design Review Board who have been in panel for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, would you please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance for the record. Lindsay Schnarr. Yes. Janet Marquard. Present. Eric Azikos. Yes. And Tom Long. Yes. Okay. And uh, we also have Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting in October of 1983 the charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review boards are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its question, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on this recommendation, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant, board, applicable land use board, and building commissioner. Tonight's agenda <clears throat> is um, DRB FY 2021-23, Town of Amherst, to review the proposed building wall sign and metal frame under section 3.20 of, of the zoning bylaw located at the Boltwood Plaza, 51, Bolt, 51 Boltwood Walk. Uh, okay, I think that's probably sufficient, is it, Maureen? And we have somebody here to... Yeah, that, that, okay. that's good. Yeah, we have... Bill uh, Gazin, how would you say your last name? Sorry, Bill, from the Public Art Committee um, that will be presenting um, regarding the sign and metal uh, frame on the Boltwood Walk Plaza. Do you want me to pull up uh, the presentation, Bill? Yeah, so can you guys yeah. hear me? Yes, now, sure. Okay, great. So I am actually uh, zooming in from vacation. I'm coming to you from the beautiful New Jersey Shore. I'm in Brigantine, New Jersey, if any of you know that. So there is a chance that I may be interrupted here. I may lose my uh, connection, but I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. So yeah, I'm the chair of the Public Art Commission. I've been on the commission for quite a number of years now. Well, three, four, somewhere, something like that. I've been chair for about a year and a half. Before that, I was treasurer. <clears throat> One of the things that um, when I joined the commission, I learned that we were uh, uh, sort of put in charge of was a project that we didn't initiate and had no input in when it was developed, which was the, um, the, the poem windows by Ritsuko Tahoe, which went in when uh, the Boltwood garage was, was rebuilt. So this piece, um, as many of you know, uh, was installed and, and, and was up and running, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2011, but only actually worked for a few months before it died. And um, unfortunately, when this piece was commissioned, there was no money set aside for um, keeping it running in an ongoing fashion. 
So basically what happened was that we had a, a, a site-specific artwork commission that never really existed, despite the fact that her name was engraved in the stone around the windows, which apparently was done um, slightly under the radar of the people who did commission the piece. I spoke to a few of the people who were involved in it and they said that they were taken by surprise by some of the things that happened with this. Uh, it was returned to working order briefly 10 years later for another six months or so, but in the last 20 years, um, this project has actually been operational for um, almost none of that time. And so it was one of the things that uh, the Public Art Commission member always bothered me and the rest of the members of the commission, um, which is what to do with this um, rather embarrassing dead work of art that um, has been sitting there uh, fallow for so many years. So. Um, going back and forth over a lot of time, we decided the best course of action was to repurpose the site and, um, and make it into an outdoor gallery for rotating works where we could invite artists to show work in the space um, in an ongoing basis where the town wouldn't have to have any permanent financial commitment to keeping the works up and running. The artists would install the work. They would be responsible for keeping them running for the period of the exhibition, six months or so, and then they would take the work away and we could commission another piece. And um, so we uh, approved and voted and passed this with the support of the town manager and um, peripherally the town council about a year ago and have been working behind the scenes to get this up and running. Um, we were able to secure a grant um, for $2,000 um, from the state through the uh, cultural district to actually run a pilot of this and we held a, a, a call for applicants and chose local artist Benjamin Cowden to be the first artist to show here. We're also piggybacking a little bit on a DOT grant um, that's gonna pay for this signage. And so um, Benjamin Cowden has actually already installed the work in the space um, as a kind of test run. It's there now, you can go see it. Um, the formal opening is slated for September 10th. So we need to get this um, signage up and uh, running by then. Uh, so there's a little bit of urgency here. I think um, things got delayed a little bit because of summer schedules and, and people being in and out of town. So I appreciate your um, coming together to talk about this today. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. oh, hold on. So this is the head house in Boltwood Plaza that was built above the parking garage. Um, it, it, you can go back a slide actually. So yeah, it's so the parking garage is beneath. I mean, I assume that most of you are familiar with the space. Um, there is a small room um, in the space, uh, which we can talk about in a minute. But that's you know that's where it is in bold. Okay, so go to the next one. Um, there's a bunch of bullet points that kind of touch on this. I assume that you guys have had a chance to look at the PowerPoint beforehand. Um, let me just call out anything I see on here that's really important right now. Happy to answer questions after I, I run through this quickly. Um, I think you covered on this um, yeah. in your in yeah. your intro. Yeah. Okay. And so um, there is currently a uh, metal. Okay. So that's so. There's a couple of things you can see in this image if you look closely. Yep. Right where that is. That's the existing metal sign describing the original project. Actually, just to the left of that is the door that gives you access to the space. Right now, all that space has been used um, is for the storage of um, landscaping equipment. Um, so there's like lawn mowers and weed whackers and stuff in there. And um, uh, we, we've able, you know, so the windows themselves are fairly self-contained units. So that stuff can actually, for the most part, stay there, at least for this version of the project. Um, and it hasn't been a problem. And we have facilities on board and they've been working with us hand in hand through all this. The, um, the location of the metal frame, which we'll see better in the next image, right, will go around the existing windows primarily because um, her name, the name of the artists uh, is engraved in the stones there. Um, and it would be the, it's the cheapest solution is to put a metal frame in that would match the existing metal of the, um, of the surrounding building painted that same greenish gray shade. This was the recommendation by facilities rather than try to take out those bricks and replace them with plain bricks. And then we wanna put a new sign on that post to the right um, which will strap around the back of the sign with bolts on the front and a metal band so that actually they can be removed very easily. It's the kind of temporary or metal signings that you see actually all around already in, in Boltwood Plaza. In fact, if you look at that lamp to the right, you can 
CF, that's the kind of sign, um, although slightly smaller than that, that we envision for this. Next slide. So that's where the metal frame would go, um, covering up where it says poem windows. Um, and it wouldn't, it would, it would actually match the existing uh, structure itself. So um, the, the green would be, post, yep. yeah. Yeah. And in fact, uh, there was some talk, there's some rust on those posts of, of, of repainting those. Um, I don't know if they'll get to that or not actually, but as part of the DOT grant there, not only are they putting that ramp um, connecting the bangs, the bang center to Boltwood, but they're doing a bunch of work on the plaza. They're bringing in some new furniture. And so we're actually hoping by the time the opening happens, all this will have come together um, in a nice way. Next slide. That is the uh, sign that we're proposing. So the top part, uh, it would actually be sort of two signs butted together. The top part could potentially stay longer, uh, assuming that we're able to get funding to go beyond the pilot and, and have this as an ongoing program that's uncertain. Um, that's the title of the, of the space as, as we voted on and uh, the portal gallery and Portwood Plaza. And then the bottom part of the sign would be the description of the individual project. And that could be swapped out as new projects get installed. Um, but if for some reason uh, the pilot doesn't extend either um, uh, immediately after into, into a suite of permanent projects or there's a hiatus or maybe it just dies, which would be too bad, um, that that portal gallery sign itself can also be very easily um, taken off with no permanent changes to the structure. Next. I think that was Am it. I? Might have that been might it. Be it. Yep. Yeah, so that's uh, the quick Thanks, uh, Bill. presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have. Okay. So is this more an installation or a sculpture? It's not a painting on a wall, right? So this current project is a series of five uh, dioramas that are interactive um, and that as people approach them and make sounds or make gestures, they actually move and change in response to the viewer. Oh, okay. And is it open 24 hours a day? Uh, no, so it'll run, it has a timer, so it's not gonna be up. It has light, um, doesn't have any sound, but it has a light component. It looks quite striking at night, but mm -hmm. we didn't want it to run all night because we didn't want it to bother neighbors and also because it would be bad for the motors. So it shuts down right now at, I think it's scheduled to shut down at, at 1 a.m., but actually we can set that time to whatever, whatever we want and whatever seems most appropriate. I believe uh, Jan has raised her hand. Jan. Uh, what was the contract with the original artist? Have you looked at it? I mean, the fact that the name was etched into the stone makes me think it might have had some permanence expected. Yeah, there was permanence expected, but the piece never existed permanently. So yeah, of course, we've, we've, <laughs> we've looked at the contract, we've consulted with the town and the town's lawyers, and we spent a lot of time, quite a lot of time um, dealing with that end of it. So what do you mean it never, it never existed permanently? What do you mean by that? The piece never worked. So after it was installed, it it broke because of the cold and no solution was come up with to make it work. And the artist didn't come back to do anything about that? Nope. Huh. Okay. Sadly. <clears throat> Anybody else? Erica? Tom? Yeah, oh, I, Eric. I have a uh, question. Did um, the town has a new signage and wayfinding system. Um, and did you give any consideration to using the, the fonts? You know, this is a, a, a town commission, you know, the, the fonts, the colors for your signage that would associate it uh, with town of Amherst signage? No. Would you be willing to? Uh, we could look into it. You know, we've spent a lot of time over the years in many committees trying to get everything coordinated to that new wayfinding system. So it might be nice to try and match, if not the colors, at least the fonts. Yeah. So, you know, I put the sign together. I'm happy to make changes. Uh, it has to happen pretty quickly if we're going to make the opening. And I don't have, so you got, you know, I would have to get access to those fonts. Sure, I could certainly, Ben or myself could email you the fonts tomorrow morning. But also like the um, the kind of models of how they look, this type of well, site. Is, 
is there a designer who does this for the town? Yes. So yeah, that wasn't, um, I was never notified of any of this. Well, uh, you're with us now. We're the ones that would tell you, you're just cutting it rather close time-wise. We should have seen this a while back if you're trying to get to an opening. You know, just uh, just to clarify, so the uh, Seth Gregory was hired to assist with the design and layout of the wayfinding system. Um, he's not a contracted out to look at all so proposed signs in the town, um, but you know, staff can certainly uh, coordinate with with the public art committee okay. to see if there's any sort of adjustments that could reflect the wayfinding sign. I think it would be I think it would be nice. I mean, just given that the town is working so hard to have a consistent um, a, a signage and wayfinding strategy, um, especially from a design perspective, that you know, because this is a a, a, a town sponsored um, gallery, it would be nice to see some effort put in. And I, I understand your your timeline, but you know, maybe it could it could come together. Um, or perhaps there's some, you know, some hybridization that could happen if you don't change portal gallery, but then the information below could come into line or something like that. It would be worth looking at. Okay. Um, and I think that the, the, the metal frame will do a nice job also of um, calling attention to this location. Like it, it makes it those, five small windows feel like one larger piece. Um, and I was wondering if you gave any thought to like painting the bricks inside the frame, you know, to encourage this to be even more, <laughs> more sought out from a distance perhaps. Uh, painting the bricks, no, that was never, that was never discussed. Um, I was working with Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, What's Jeremiah's last name, Maureen? La, uh, LaPlante. LaPlante. He's LaPlante, our right. facilities manager. Yeah, I'm sure facilities would, would not appreciate having to maintain that. But, uh. Right. So he's this is his um, this is his plan for the best optimal way to mm -hmm. deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. See anybody else? Erica or Tom? Hi. I can't see oh, you. Tom. Yeah. Hey, Bill. Thanks for uh, for sharing. I, I had a question about the expectation for the art in the future. And so I know this is a pilot, right? So yeah. this particular frame serves a five framed LED based project really well. Um, but as a rotating gallery, is the expectation that these five concrete windows remain transparent or visible and that there's some kind of activity happening within those or would this ever be solid? I'm just trying to imagine the way in which you as, as the board are looking at this particular place in terms of the versatility of kinds of art that it gets shown there and whether or not it will require lighting in the future if these are not internally or self-illuminated pieces. Yeah, good question. So that's a whole room back there which has power, has internet access, and from our point of view, um, you know, depending upon the funding, the sky's the limit. So we could imagine each window having an individual diorama-like insta installation, like the current, the current one. We could imagine somebody doing things where people are looking back into the room and the whole room could potentially be a space. Uh, we could imagine video being projected, you know, into, in, you know, back into the room. Uh, one of the applicants was actually, um, uh, did present still, uh, hand-painted art, which would require thinking about lighting, um, but lighting, um, you know, would be part of each project, and that's, you know, uh, you know, would be, you know, in discussion with the artist and the and the commission, and um, you know, would be sort of individually based. But there's plenty of power and plenty of ideas that we have and options for lighting. As far as the the frame goes, I mean, I think the intention is really to um, you know, to make the space more neutral. I mean, so in the one, on the one hand, it, it'll sort of call attention to this as a, as a site for art. I mean, in some sense, literally framing this, these projects. On the other, um, you know, it, it will uh, 
you know, get rid of this dead, this sort of dead project and, and sort of make this make the site more neutral so that it can be used for a variety of things potentially. And so just to clarify, the expectation is that anyone working on this project, um, should they be commissioned to do so or win uh, the opportunity to do so, would maintain these stone um, apertures and the brick around them that would stay as is for all installations. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's that's the build. That's actually the building itself. I mean, that yeah. Would, yeah. Right. OK. That built into the building. Yeah. Part of the architecture. Right, thank you. Let's see. So uh, Lindsay. Hi. Oh, thank you. Um, so I think my biggest question is around the frame as a separate entity from the sign. And I, I wonder if, if you've looked at integrating the two in some way. I mean, as, as part of the discussion that, that was discussed, or discussion that was brought up about um, integrating with the town wayfinding, I, I also think that you know, there might be a way to use this frame as a signage opportunity, um, you know, that the sign that you're proposing is, is kind of tucked away. Um, I know that that image isn't necessarily representative because you're looking straight on, but I imagine that there might be more visibility to what you're trying to bring people to if there's not only this kind of like metal frame that sits inside of the structure, but that the, the information that's provided is somehow kind of connected to that frame um, in a more visible way or a more integrated way. So yeah, I, so we had discussed using the frame as the site for the signage, but um, rejected that for a couple of reasons. One was cost. And another was that actually, although you, this is a, uh, the image on the left, um, it, it, it's not really representative of the space. Actually, in fact, there's a tree blocking the view to that post on the right. But that post on the right sits out right. It's much more visible in a way than the frame itself is. And so putting the sign there is the most visible place you could actually put it relative to the, to the site A. And B, by using the strapping system for the sign, it makes it very easy to remove it if we needed to remove it without any um, big structural, without any structural changes to the building whatsoever. Whereas if you have some kind of permanent signage, you're just re potentially duplicating the same problem that exists now with having her name in the bricks. You know, if we made a permanent sign that said portal gallery and then portal gallery loses funding, you're back in the same place again. So are you saying that the frame is is more permanent than the sign? The frame is permanent. The frame will be permanent. It'll be affixed to the I mean, it'll be permanent in the sense that it'll be drilled into the building, you mm -hmm. know, so that will stay there. Um, it can always be removed, but it will be more permanent than the sign. Yeah, the intention is so let's say the portal gallery goes away, at least then you know, the site is just, it's just a, it's just a neutral site. It doesn't um, refer to a artwork that never existed or a gallery that doesn't currently exist, right? Yeah, I don't know. I just, I can imagine like a sign that exists even sitting kind of above the frame in some kind of way that, however it attaches, um, it just feels like it could be in the same, in a, in a stronger relationship to the frame and to the windows than as kind of this separate side piece that um, may not be as obvious and may not draw as much attention as strongly. So, you know, I think just from a design standpoint, I would lean toward a sign that that's has more of a, re a relationship to the frame, to the windows that kind of sits above it. Um, and kind of holds holds more of that space in that in that area that you're creating between the frame and the the rest of the kind of structure of that area. Um, so I, you know I know your I know time is of the essence for you, um, but if you are looking at new signage options with the town's wayfinding in mind, it might be something to also consider. Um, something that sits more in relationship with that frame. That's all. I don't know how other people feel about it, but that's just, that's my take. 
I believe Tom has raised his hand. Yeah, no, Lindsay, I'm tending to agree with you. And I think one of the contradictions that I think I'm seeing, Bill, and this is just something to keep in mind, is that, um, and this might be, you know, part of the sphere of influence of the town wanting to keep things consistent, but the green frame is actually going to just blend in with the green structure around it and just look like an architectural element. And I have a feeling it's not really going to call the kind of attention to that piece of art that you want. And I think in relationship to what Lindsay's saying, um, if the frame and the sign were then hence the same color, they would have this, uh, a, they would be part of a different family than the architecture that's there calling attention to the relationship between them. So uh, for instance, right now your sign is white. The city, the, the town specs have like a cream color. Maybe your sign goes to cream and maybe the frame is cream. Maybe it, to offset it from the architecture that's there so that it looks like a, that it becomes a piece that's different from the metal frame of the building. So I'd be thinking about the correlation of those two elements um, you know, as a signage and a frame being different from the architecture intentionally, uh, but and maybe more slightly in line with um, the aesthetics of the signage system again, which is a maroon and a cream and a, and a really dark brown red uh, color, all of which I think could work really well on this in this particular location, and I think all of which would offset against the brick and and the uh, green structure that's there. So I'd be taking a look at figuring out how that frame and, and signage could be different from the architecture to make it really pop as an element in the, in the landscape. That's a so nice I, idea. I was going to say that's a good idea. It's, it's, a, it's a good idea because it's a, a simpler solution than um, some of the other things I think, you know, that might have been kicking around in my head, but the color match um, would bring those together. I think that's nice. I really like that idea. Um, but uh, do you guys provide support for this? I mean, so, so this is my first time coming through design review. Um, and, uh, you know, we have no budget. I'm a volunteer. Um, you know, I have some design skills, but I'm not a professional designer. So, uh, you know, Maureen, you sort of said, well, maybe. So how does this, how does this stuff happen? Well, I, I am I'm happy to work with you outside of the meeting um, to um, find out what the, the colors are um, specifically uh, in the wayfinding system and the, uh, the, the font types. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, I only have PowerPoint and Microsoft. I don't have Photoshop or InDesign, but um, I mean, I'm happy to play around with with the colors, fonts, and um, your proposed sign, like I would need, we would need this. Well, I guess it would, yeah. So we, we could play around with that, the weight, the weights of um, this lettering. If, if you wanted to continue with this square sort of pattern here. Well, that's a, that's the logo that the um, the commission voted on and approved as our as our logo for the game. Yeah, and that would be easy to do in Microsoft. Uh, uh, so, um, so I'm happy to work with you, but if, if any members have a passion for signage and would like to help. Well, what down. I'm saying is we, you know, we, you know, there's no budget for uh, to hire a professional designer to do this, to do this work. So I'm just wondering from the point of view of the, um, committee design review committee, uh, how do they see the public art commission proceeding? Well, we just, we're going to make a recommendation to whatever board or entity um, is making decisions on this. All we can do is recommend. We don't have a budget, um, so we can't uh, assist with any monetary uh, offerings. We can, we'll send our recommendation on. What does that mean, though? What does a recommendation mean? Well, well, we don't, we don't make policy. We only can, we can recommend, we can send our recommendation. Um, and I don't know, Maureen, who exactly will be the next yeah, group yes. in line. Yeah, good question, uh, Catherine. So um, the memo, um, you know, the board, when they're ready, they'll make a motion to, you know, vote on, I would, uh, uh, on, on, you know, uh, 
on providing recommendations and suggestions, which would, I think in this case, would go to the building commissioner and the facilities manager. So let's say we don't resolve this issue, but we have our opening scheduled for, you know, when we do, um, which is September 10th, right? The work is already installed. The artist has been paid. Um, what do we just take a piece of cardboard and hold it up or something, you know? I mean, I'm not sure. I just, I'm just trying to understand yeah, how the process works. Yeah. Well, uh, say that. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. Uh, well, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I'm happy to work, you know, staff is happy to um, work with you, you know, tomorrow, this week, whatever, or next week, whatever works with you. And, you know, um, I can certainly email um, the revised design and layout to the board. Uh, and, you know, we have been sort of flexible in the past of each member has emailed me individually their thoughts or as you can see we we can hold meetings sort of you know we, we try to have a meeting once a month but um perhaps the board would be agreeable to hold a quick meeting you know next week or in two weeks whenever this revised plan is is ready for them to review so i, I think the board is very flexible to you know see this uh, you know that it works for you in your timeline um but you know it, yeah we're not intending to try to get in your way. <laughs> we're just offering some, some thoughts here. And, and I need a bit of clarification because we're talking about the wayfaring signs. And I don't know if some of the design board is proposing that we use a way, the, um, the wayfaring sign with the colors that uh, are proposed for uh, the ones that are going to be put around town. Or should we are, we, are we advocating for something cleaner and um, a bit more uh, simple? I don't, the, when you start talking about the wayfaring sign, understand the font might be adjusted, but are you also suggesting that we use a similar background? Is that what I'm hearing? Or basically, I, <laughs> I wouldn't, that wouldn't yeah. be my favorite, but that's fine. I, I, I raised it for an issue of, of consistency and kind of town voice, a visual voice, if right. you will. And I think that that could be done in a number of ways. It wouldn't have to be fully in compliance. Um, you know, I don't think that the town wayfinding signs have uh, precedent for, you know, the text information here about the artworks, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, to use the uh, the, the font and the um, color would make some sense. Um, and then I think there's a fair amount of freedom in terms of like how the rest of it is undertaken. Although I would throw in one more thing about the sign and that is regardless wherever it's placed um, that we should make sure that it's uh, accessible. Uh, to somebody, you know, mounted at a height that's readable with um, somebody who is, say, a wheelchair user, right? So to reference uh, ADA compliance guidelines. Uh, I think Any Jan has raised her hand. Jan, okay. Yeah, a couple of things. Um, I like um, the suggestion that Tom made that we use some of the colors. Um, not, we don't necessarily, as Erica said, we don't have to follow the exact layout, but to use some of these same colors because there are a lot of different kinds of signs and colors all over. And those ones that are up on posts like that with the band behind, they're just everywhere for parking and directional. And so having anything that conforms would help. And also I like the idea of the band or the frame color changing um, to both, as he said, make it more noticeable, but also to conform more with the color um, and then have the sign match. If you want them to be um, ADA height, they have to be the height that we put the writer's walk signs in, which is quite low. Um, and maybe not use the planter side, use the other post on the left then so that a person can get to it. The only thing is then if they're too wide, you risk running into it you know, or backing into it when you're standing there. We can't use the post to the left because it blocks the doorway. Okay, well, the one on the right, it'll be down in the 
bushes in that tree there. Can we go back to that image, Maureen? Sure, yep. Um, let yeah, me so no, that one. there. Yeah, so I know, yeah, we have to, I'm not sure what the height is, but yeah, the pole, the post doesn't go, it goes into that planter, so. Yeah, well, it's about what, what is it, Maureen? Three and a half, four feet per ADA? Yeah, Erica, can you, what, is it 36 to 48 inches high or 72, or Tom? Uh, yeah, I don't have it at my fingertips, but I think the top of the sign can be higher it, than that. Yeah. I think, I think it has to do with the center of the sign. Uh, yeah. I'm actually not, I have to look it up. And again, but I think the 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 thing about that is that um, the town probably has specs for that. And if this is on those bands, it could be slid up and down. Um, my guess is that it'll be pretty close um, in terms of being close to the uh, the planter or the top of the planter, but I, I think it can still exist in that space. And I, I think it would be legible from a handicap perspective. But there is a tree in there right now. Didn't we see a photo with a more recent grove? Uh, uh, the tree is uh, probably back here, but let oh, me Oh, I thought it was in the planter. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, no. Oh, that, I see, I see the foreground, I get it, yeah. Okay, any other comments or thoughts? I, I also like Lindsay's idea of putting it on the frame itself, but I realize that's a whole nother proposition at this point. Um, I think it's a better idea than having it sticking out on the post. But. I actually feel like it might, um, like if you were thinking about a piece of art in a gallery, you, you wouldn't necessarily put the sign on the frame of the art. And so I do feel like there is some consistency in having them as separate entities. Like I said, I think you need some kind of graphic element to tie them together so that the sign and the piece feel like they work together. But I, but I think it would it might be distracting um, for it to be sort of attached to the actual frame itself. Also, I, I think that the frame in a dark color would make it look more like a piece that's been framed, so to speak. <clears throat> um, so if you're looking at the wayfair, um, the wayfinding um, colors, that darker reddish brown, maybe uh, I don't know that town common in black. I don't I don't remember seeing that before. But the others are the ones that we're using. Yeah. yeah the only I issue with that might that. be it's, it'd be too close to the brick color. Um, although no, I think it's considerably darker. Hmm. Yeah. You could even have it the edge of it outlined in black, maybe. And then have the sign be that same color with the text in white. Is that? Mm, yeah, or cream, whatever we've been doing. I think it's I think it's dark with a cream colored font, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or we could do the cream background with the with that color as a text color. Right. And then that would coordinate them in a way that would tie them together, but it would make still make it stand out from the architecture of the little building. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that seems like a good certainly a reasonable solution. Um, so in terms of the font, uh, you know, we could use some of that, those fonts if we can get them, especially for that bottom section with the, the description of the artist piece as well. Yeah, they are, they are proprietary fonts. They're just ones that are out there. Um, Maureen can give them to you and um, it doesn't take a designer. You would just replace the fonts. And, yep. and also there's a sign size for those um, vertical rectangular signs um, that's standard now, which isn't showing on here, but it's the one the Riders Walk used. Those are actually a little bigger than we need. It would be a smaller version of that, but the proportions of height to width is sort of set in the wayfinding um, program, whatever you call it. But do we want the town crest on there? Is that, I don't understand, some, some of the signs have it. Some of them have it. I mean, oh, no. it is a town project. It's, you know, it's easy enough to grab that logo and pop it on if you want to. You have a logo for your little gallery now. So maybe this could go at the bottom or something. Okay. Are we making sense? <laughs> Do you, so yeah, th this all seems doable in a fairly short time. Um, Certainly this, this kind of, I mean, in terms of the color and changing the font and putting the crest on there, that seems like a pretty quick, quick fix. I mean, I'm not beholden to any color scheme really or font. So yeah, that seems- Who's printing the sign? It's just an aluminum scrim over a metal sign, or I mean a, 
uh, scrim over an aluminum sign? What's the, how are you having it made? Yeah, that's Jeremiah. Um, he's, he's the one who's gonna get it made. So he said he has a, um, you know, somebody can do pretty quick turnaround on that. Yeah, I think it's gonna be like the, the other signs you see around that have the straps on the back. So it's, it's some kind of sticker final. or some kind of application onto aluminum. I don't see any reason why you can't get him the final artwork by next week sometime. So, you know, yeah. there's plenty of time. Yeah. So if yeah. I may, uh, just to repeat um, people's suggestions, I uh, would like it consistent with the wayfinding system, you know, not necessarily entirely, but some of the elements from the wayfinding uh, make the sign ADA compliant, um, the, um, have the sign to be um, the cream background with uh, brown lettering as shown in the, um, here with the town common, this brown, I think Jan, you had said. Uh, well, no, we were talking about the darker brown and oh, this one. having it cream with the darker brown, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. And then the that. darker brown for the frame. And darker. Darker brown. Uh, and then if we look to the left in that, where it says visitor center Jones library, we could do the dark, that same darker brown for the type and then the cream for the background. So the frame would be the darker brown and then uh, it'd be the, the type and then the green background. Is that? Mm -hmm. If everybody else agrees. Say that again. So cream background with darker brown lettering for the sign. Right, and then the darker brown color for the color of the frame. Okay. Yep. I got that. Um, and then, um, and then consider placing the Amherst logo on the sign. Um, and I think that yes. that's it. Yeah. I think that the, the, um, the writer's walk signs, they, they are larger and they are conveying a lot more information that you need to, um, build, but it might be a good reference for you to take a look at how, sure. How the colors and this the the fonts were incorporated into conveying all of that info, um, and and the logo as well. It's really small. It's at the bottom, but it I think it would be a good a good uh, starting point. Sure, yeah. or jumping off point maybe. <clears throat> Maureen, you can send him those so he doesn't have to walk to one on the street and take a picture. Yeah, I'm actually trying to find it now. I can't remember what meeting it was, but yeah, I'll certainly email it to Bill tomorrow. I can I send it to you too. Yep. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right. How's that sound? Are you? That's fine. Yeah, I can, okay. I'll be here Good. next week and I can turn that around next week for okay. sure. As long as, um, yeah, we get it to Jeremiah and I'm sure he could. That still gives, we should, we're still three weeks out. So it should yeah. be enough time. It should be enough time. Okay. All right, uh, Bill, tomorrow I will certainly email you um, with all this info and we can touch base. Um, so do, do you guys want to make a motion or do we continue this? Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe we want to continue it until we see the, uh, or, or, or it could be, uh, uh, you know, positive recommendation with, yeah. with those suggestions. Yeah. And then we could, um, right. if you guys feel comfortable, we could do this by email or we could have a quick me meeting whenever, um, the sign is ready in the, and the frame is ready, okay. whatever you guys wish. About, or we could figure it out uh, via email, whatever. If you what about moving to preliminarily approve um, with the conditions or with the plan as agreed upon at the meeting, something like that. Sure, okay. And then if it comes through, we don't have to do anything else. Right, okay. Is there a second to that? <laughs> Should I just move that? <laughs> So moved. <laughs> okay, and I think Tom seconded. Okay, any further discussion? I think we've probably given a really thorough review of the, everything and you can always come back. So, okay, um, I'll, then I'll do a roll call. Uh, Lindsay, yes or no? Do you? Yes. Yes, okay, Erica? Yes. Jan? Yes. Tom? Yes. Catherine, yes. Okay. All right. It's been moved and approved. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Sure. <laughs> Could be a nice addition to Amherst after all these years. I will say I did walk by I want I walked by yesterday to take another photo of the engravement of the brick to get a, a better photo for the slideshow. 
and I, I saw that the art is in the windows and I was delighted. It's really fun to look at. So I, I recommend yeah. everyone to check it out when you get a chance. Yeah. Um, did you guys want to review the minutes from? Yeah. July. I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much. Okay. Yep. Yes, thank you. From July 24th. Okay. Or June, no, June 24th. Whatever you have there. Yep. Okay. Are you going to put them up uh, right now? I'm looking at. Oh, oh, should I? I, I can. Um, give me one second. I'm looking at wayfaring signs. These are all ones that you sent out preliminarily yeah. and you made comments on, right? Right. Uh, yeah. So this was back in on June 24th, where you guys reviewed the oh the Sweet Alice parking area and oh. the mural at um mm -hmm. at Wildwood. No. At, um, at Park River. River. Yeah. Park thank you. River. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and it seemed like the planning board uh, accepted because Tom, you talked about it at the planning board meeting. The Sweet Alice parking, they yep. seemed to take everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, they incorporated all of our comments. Yeah. Except for the trash. Right. That was more of a uh, town issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Did anybody have any uh, corrections or additions to the minutes? That was probably kind of our, what's that? I move to accept them. Okay. Is there a second? Tom. Okay, Erica. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me take a roll call. Lindsay? Yes. Okay, Erica? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jan? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Okay, we've accepted those. Okay. All right. Well, um, so I did had mentioned in an email that Amherst College is submitting an application for their wayfinding system. <laughs> and now staff, we're talking about looking at their wayfinding and our wayfinding and make sure it all is jiving um, <laughs> location wise. And um, yeah. so uh, once they formally submit their application to the DRB, I will schedule a meeting and hopefully that doodle poll um, the, the times you indicated um, oh. uh, will match up. Um, so maybe I hope to um, have scheduled meeting uh, at the end of August or perhaps the first week of September. Okay. So uh, I'll go back to uh, Tom just a bit. Uh, it didn't seem like the planning board spent a lot of time discussing our recommendations uh, for the archipelago project. Uh, is that because they had studied it so carefully before the meeting <laughs> i mean I, yeah i mean everybody had had our notes before the meeting i think the the biggest challenge was that the zoning board doesn't necessarily get to decide it they don't if we had if we had made a stipulation that x had to happen in order for y i think the planning board would have upheld it but i think because we're you know the planning board's making a decision, for instance, about the rear setback based on whether we agree with the legal definition of this particular, um, uh, I guess, waiver that they're they're seeking. And so, for I think for a lot of people, it's more of a legal matter than it is do we like the way this looks. And so, I think that's part of the issue that I feel like I'm dealing with coming back and forth. And I go to one meeting, I'm like, this has to look this way. And I go to another meeting and, and that doesn't really matter so much um, in terms of you know whether or not it's legal for them to do that within the confines of a particular set of laws and rules. So I, I do think that there was less of a discussion about it because they can't, they, they, there was no way to, they didn't have a lot of leverage to say, yeah, redesign this entire facade, which, you know, sets back a project months. Um, and I guess that wasn't worth uh, the discussion for, for a lot of people. Yeah. Any other thoughts from the uh, board about our most recent recommendations? Seemed like Sweet Alice hit the sweet spot the planning board <laughs> the other yeah um, the other one like oh yeah okay well I, I i personally thought you guys did a wonderful job particularly at the the, the last meeting uh for um july 19th for archipelago so 
Well, um, we didn't make any like really major, major strong recommendations. Um, I think we discussed what we could and unless they were gonna take it completely off the drawing board and start over, um, it is what it is. And so um, I'm still a little concerned about the north side with no, no landscaping, a lot of things about that, but um, it's done, so. I have to say my most recent blog in the Amherst Current, I don't know if any of you saw that about development and preservation, I got a lot of email about uh -huh. that. People are very worked up about all this. I'm sure they are, yeah. I'm sure they are. So. But for me, thinking back on what we, our discussions with Archipelago and even Archipelago, this is a perfect example of what we don't have. If we had had a master plan for that block from Triangle Street up to the toy box, that area, that with a vision that, I don't know, sort of gave direction to developers so that we would have a cohesive and vibrant uh, group of buildings there, um, we'd be in a different place. Um, but they're working blind, we're working blind. So anyway, I'll, I won't get started on that. <laughs> but I do feel like there's something missing in the town for that. Do we have anything else, uh, Maureen? Uh, no. Any public comments? Anybody from the public out there? Um, there is not. Okay. All right. Then um, do I hear uh, a motion to adjourn? I'll move it. Okay. Hour. No, All right. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> okay. okay. Been moved and seconded. All in favor to adjourn, say aye. You can say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Well, very good. Um, stalwart design review board coming together once again and welcome back Maureen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, I'll be in touch about the I sign in, in the future okay. meeting. All right. Very okay. good. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye.